Praise the Lord, everyone. God is so good and his mercy endures forever. I have a word for you, so let's just get right into it. In the book of Genesis, the um, second chapter, I'm going to read the 15th through the 17th verse. The word of God says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Verse 15 says, uh, six. 16, I'm sorry, verse 16 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Verse 17 says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Let's go to um, the third chapter of Genesis. And I want to read the first through the fourth verse. The word of God says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animal, animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say to you, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? Verse 2 says, The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit trees in the garden. Verse 3, But God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4 says you will not certainly die. And I'm going to read that again. The devil said you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for your word. God, it is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. And Father, I pray that I would handle your word properly, Father God. I pray, God, that it would go forth in clarity, Father. I pray, God, that you would speak to your people, Father, the things which you have placed on my heart. Help me to communicate them right, God. Help me to communicate and say what the Spirit is saying, God, to your people. So I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I'm asking, Lord, that it would be acceptable in your sight. So, Father, I give you full permission to take control of what I say, God. God, and think with my mind, Father, and lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified, my Lord, and you would be glorified. I ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. And so, if I were to give this message a title, I would title it, The Devil is a Liar. Mm. Verse 4 says, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. The lying began right there in the beginning. He began to lie. The Bible says that he's the father of lies. The Bible says that he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. He's one of the my least favorite people to talk about. I don't talk about him unless I have to. I I I I I, I just I just don't like to talk about him. And I don't like it like the enemy because he has deceived the nation. He has wreaked havoc on the lives of many people. He has destroyed many lives and he has, um, you know, he has done some awful things and he is a, he's a, he's a tricky little devil <laughs> and he, he holds back no punches. He's here. He'll, he'll hit you in any way that he can, any way that he knows that it'll hurt you. He'll hit your children. He'll hit your finances. He'll hit your job. He'll hit your marriage. You know, he, his, his, his aim is to kill, steal, and destroy. Joy. Over in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, at the third verse, the word of God says that, um, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. And so that word deceive there means to seduce or to beguile. And beguile is to charge something or to be enchanting to it and then also you know it gets you to believe something that is not true he's a seducer he seduced Eve in the garden and you know what it wasn't just about seducing her just so that she can disobey God but he had an ulterior motive hidden underneath he didn't just want her to disobey God he knew that if 
if, if Eve disobeyed God and if Adam disobeyed God, he knew that Adam would bring sin and death into the world. The Bible says again that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wasn't out just to get them to eat a little piece of fruit. He wasn't out just to get them to disobey God. He was out to kill mankind. You know, when he comes after you, he's not just trying to get you to commit adultery. He's trying to kill your marriage. He's not getting, you know, he's not out to get you to, to just do what it seems like on the surface. He has something ulterior motive. He's trying, his ultimate goal is to kill you, is to destroy you, is to bring death to whatever he's working at. So we have to know that that deceiver is a liar. And you know, um, he's smart. But he's not smarter than God. But what he's been smart enough to do, he's found an angle to get into. You know, he's discovered an entrance into man's psyche. Um, you know, he's done it by, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret how he's done it. He's been able to, to um, you know, infiltrate or he's been able to get into man's psyche by using the five senses. And do you know, you know what the five senses are. There are eyesight. There are ears where we, you know, our eyes that we see with, it's our sight, it's our ears that we hear with, it's our nose that we smell with. These are the five senses. It's our touch and it's many different things I can get into with the touch, but we'll just keep it at our touch and then our taste, our appetite, how things taste in our mouth. You know, over and to prove that, over in um, 2 Samuel, you can read the story. I know you're familiar with it. Everybody that has read the Bible or everyone who knows about King David knows about David and Bathsheba. And what did the devil do? You know, King David went on that rooftop and he looked over into the other rooftop and saw some things that he could, shouldn't have seen. You know, Bathsheba over there. And so, and what did the devil do? He used his senses. He used his eyesight to get in. And once all of that started working, then there was no turning back. You know, David did some things that were ungodly. And it started by the enemy getting in through, you know, his psyche, getting in through his sight, allowing him to see something that he shouldn't have, you know, should have walked away. And not to say anything bad about David, not to judge him, because we've all have looked at things where we should have walked away and we just, you know, when our senses get to kicking in, then, you know, we don't, we don't um, heed that, that unction in our spirit that tells us, you know, oh, you need to turn, you need to, you know, like the Holy Spirit I was talking about, our guide, he helps us. And sometimes we don't listen and we allow the devil in you know, we, we hear the word of God, but we know our senses kick in and we want what we want. But it, it destroyed some things in David's life. That baby ended up, it caused the life of something. So there was death that occurred because of what David had did. And so even in um, what we were just talking about with Eve, how he used her senses. If you read a little bit further in Genesis, the third chapter, around the sixth verse, it begins to tell how Eve began to look at that fruit. And he not only did he use, you know, her sight when she looked at it, but she had some desires because she thought she was getting ready to be smarter. You know, he began to use a lot of different things. But one of the things that he used, her sight, she began to, to look at that fruit and it became desirable and pleasure. And then she gave it to Adam. And Adam, who knows, the Bible doesn't tell us what their conversation was in between the time that she gave him the fruit. It just tells us that she gave him the fruit and he took of it and ate. We don't know what the conversation was, what she may have said, how it may have smelled and how it may have looked and what she may have told him, you know, to get his senses to work and to get him distracted because it is a scientific fact that your five senses work together with your body to help it to function properly. It works with the brain and so if something is off balance then you're going to not think properly. You're not going to think straight and that's the tactic of the devil. He gets our senses off. He gets us not to think properly. You know, he gets us to go against the word of God. Truly Eve and truly because she repeated it back to, to, to the enemy. Truly Eve knew 
that God, she had the word of God where he said not to do it or you would surely die. Surely she had the word of God. But when her senses kicked in and when she began to listen to the devil, you know, when he got into her psyche and then she she began to listen to him, it, it threw her off and she, you know, she forgot about what God said. And so, you know, but there's hope for us, even though the devil is smart, even though he's been using the same tactic over the years, you know, there's something that supersedes our senses, and that's the word of God. And I want to tell you about a person who is our hero, hallelujah, our savior, the Lord King Jesus, who the devil tried to do that with. He tried to use the senses to get Jesus, you know, to tip Jesus, because even as I was saying, with Eve, his, his 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 desire, the enemy's desire wasn't just to get her to eat that the sin against God. He knew that it was going to bring death. He knew that it was going to bring sin into the world. Now, here with Jesus over in the book of Matthew, we're reading in just a second. In the book of Matthew, the devil, you know, he, he wasn't, he knew that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And any of you who have fasted 10 minutes, you know that, you know, after a while, your, your senses is going to begin to kick in. You're watching. If you watch TV and a commercial comes on, you know, that cheeseburger looks better than it ever looked before. You know, that ice cream. Oh my God. You'll start craving all those things. Your senses, you'll begin to, to, to remember what it tastes like, what it smells like, you know. And so the enemy knew that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, but Jesus was on a mission. Don't misinterpret me or don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that he had a chance with our sake. He had no chance with our Savior because our Savior was on a mission. So he was not going to get him. But I'm using our Savior as an example to show us how to defeat this devil who's got this little tactic, you know, using the senses. We're going to be like our Savior, Jesus, and what he did. Let's read what the Bible says over in Matthew. It's the um, fourth chapter and it is the 10th verse. This is how Jesus defeated that devil or what he showed, his example. He showed us. You know, you may be uh, operating in the senses. You know, you may have had, be hungry at the time, right? You know, that thing, you might be hungry for whatever the devil is trying to bring you away, but this is what our Lord Jesus is telling us what we should do. Matthew 4.10 says, then Jesus told him, go away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus said, for it is written. He used the word of God. He done that about how God. He defeated that devil with the word of God. And I hear the Lord saying over in Psalms, the psalmist said, thy word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I came to tell you tonight, Christians, when that devil becomes, when he comes up against you, using those tactics that he's been using since the beginning, lying to people, you know, his ultimate goal again is not just to get you um, to sin, it's to bring death into your life. Whatever he He's attacked and he's trying to kill that in you. So we have to be strong men and women of God. And we have to follow the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have to use the word of God to combat that devil. We cannot allow him, you know, to get into our psyches, through our senses, through our sight, through our hearing, through our smell, through our taste. No, we are bigger than that. Just like Jesus showed us. He had been fasting for 40 days. If anybody could have been tempted, you know, with their senses, it could have been the Lord. But he showed us the word of God is more sharper. It's powerful. Hallelujah. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. He cut that devil down. He, he shut that devil down with the word of God. So I came to tell you tonight, get the word in your heart. The Bible says to study, to show yourself approved. So when that devil comes up against you, trying to get in through your psyche, trying to get in through your senses, ultimately to kill whatever it is he's, he's attacking. We have to have the word of God because how many of you know that if Jesus, how many of you Jesus had millions riding on what on him going to the cross. Hiya, hiya. Our salvation was dependent upon Jesus huh? hanging on that cross and playing the blood, huh? the blood, the blood. And he knew that if Jesus aborted his mission, huh? 
hallelujah, that he was coming to try to kill mankind. He wanted us to go to hell with him. But glory be to God that our Savior, glory be to God that our Savior was stronger than that. Our Savior, the Lord King Jesus, hallelujah, he showed us how to defeat, defeat that devil. And so again, I say to you, get the word of God in your heart. Get the word in your heart so when that devil comes after you, you'll have a word to defeat him with. Glory be to God. And you may be watching this video and you have not given your life to the Lord. The Bible says over in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse, the word of God says, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. So I want you to repeat after me. If you're ready to give your heart to the Lord, hallelujah, just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. I am sorry for the wrong that I have done. I'm inviting you in to be my savior. I believe that Jesus died. I believe that he was buried and I believe that he rose again. So I'm calling on the name of Jesus to save me. And now that I am saved, I pray that you would fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Baptize me afresh and anew so that I might have the power to live for you. I pray and I ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. And if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Just pray and ask God to lead you to a spirit-led church. When you get there, let the pastor know that you just gave your life to the Lord and they'll take you under their wings and they'll shepherd you and they'll help you to grow in the things of the Lord. And Christians to you, I say, I say again, you know, get the word of God in your heart. The Bible says to study to show yourself a Prove. You've got to have some weapons that you're able to use when that devil comes and gets you. Get you. We have to be like our hero. We have to be like the Lord King Jesus. He said he beat that devil down with the word of God. He said, for it is written. Hallelujah. He didn't allow him to work on his senses. He said, for it is written. And so I, I again, I say to you, get the word of God in your heart. Thank you so much for listening to the video. I pray that God would keep you. I pray he bless you. I pray he bless your family. I pray that he just grow you even more and more stronger in these last days. I, I pray that you would be a witness to others. You know, don't forget about those that do not have the Lord in their heart. Let the Lord use you to be a witness to others. And again, as I always say, God loves you and I love you too. See you on the next video. God bless you.